Have you ever noticed why dead tank CTs blast more often than live tank CTs? Why is it always the dead tank current transformer that turns into a ticking time bomb? Let's unravel the shocking truth behind it. This is not just a coincidence. There's a reason why dead tank CTs are more prone to catastrophic failure. And to understand that, we need to go straight to the core, quite literally, and see how they're constructed. In a dead tank current transformer, the primary conductor enters from the top, travels down through the tank, passes through the CT core, and then rises up again to exit from the top. That means the current path is longer, with a more complicated internal layout. This entire path lies within a tank that is grounded, hence the name dead tank. Now here's the problem. Since the tank is grounded and the primary conductor is at high voltage, any failure in internal insulation can cause an arc to jump to the tank body. That's what leads to the violent explosions we often see when dead tank CTs fail. Over time, moisture ingress, insulation aging or overheating can all contribute to internal breakdown. And with so much of the primary path enclosed within the tank, it becomes nearly impossible to detect issues in advance. Now, let's talk about the live tank CT, which is widely considered the safer alternative. In this design, the primary conductor passes directly through the CT core, and the entire assembly is housed in an elevated, insulated enclosure. This housing is at line potential, not grounded like the dead tank, and the current path is much shorter and more direct. Because of this simpler internal path, there's less insulation stress, less thermal buildup, and less risk of catastrophic failure. Even if something does go wrong, the effects are usually confined and manageable. But that brings up the question, if live tank CTs are safer and more modern, why do we still find dead tank CTs in so many substations? The answer lies in history. Dead tank CTs were part of older substation designs, and they were the standard in the past due to their ability to house multiple cores and handle higher burdens. Many existing substations, especially those built decades ago, still rely on these CTs because upgrading them is costly and complex. So it's not that they're better, it's that they're already installed and retrofitting a substation isn't always practical, especially when budgets and downtime are concerns. That said, as substations are modernized, many utilities are shifting towards live tank designs to reduce the risk and improve reliability. Let's not forget what makes dead tank CTs so dangerous today. It's their design drawback. The longer internal conductor path, housed inside a grounded tank, introduces multiple points where insulation can fail. One weak spot, one moisture pocket, one degraded bushing. And the result can be a violent internal flashover that shatters the tank and sends oil and debris flying. That's why we say the dead tank CT is a ticking time bomb especially if regular diagnostics and maintenance are neglected. Have you ever come across a CT failure in your substation or plant? Was it a dead tank or a live tank? What was the impact? Let us know in the comments. Your experience can help others understand the risks better. If this video helped clarify something for you, or if you found the visual explanation helpful, then please like the video, share it with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel for more Power System Insights. You can also make a one-time contribution by hitting the thanks button. It really helps us keep making quality content. And for those who want to fuel our passion further, consider joining our channel by clicking the join button. Your support keeps us motivated to keep digging deep into the electrical engineering world. This was your detailed look into why the dead tank current transformer can be a silent threat inside your substation until next time, this is Electrology, powering your knowledge.